Hello and welcome. This is Michael Kölling talking about the Stride Editor again. And today we will talk about visuals and layout in the Stride Editor to help you read and write your code. Just pause this scenario and open the editor and there we can start. The first thing to notice uh, is that you are not responsible anymore for the horizontal layout and that means mostly indentation. So indentation in Stride is done automatically for you. You see that here with the frames that have multiple different colors and when you insert a new frame um, that frame will automatically be laid out in the right indentation and there is nothing that can go wrong about it. You are however still in control about um, white space in the vertical sense. So I can insert here for example a bit of white space. I can also insert a lot of white space if I want to. That is the equivalent to inserting blank lines um, and in fact these blank lines are frames. I could take them and drop them somewhere else. Um, so you are still in control over vertical white space because vertical white space is often um, a semantic question. I can try to group my statements here with a bit of space in between to um, send a hint to a reader of the program so that you can still do. The layout in the horizontal, uh, you don't have to worry about this. So sometimes when you get very long lines, um, there are various conventions about when you should break your line and when it should wrap. In the Stride Editor, this is automatic. So if I have a line that does not fit into the line, you see here, if you observe here, for example, the wrapping is automatic. So if a line does not fit in here, then you get an automatic wrapping behavior that wraps at a reasonable point and has an indentation here to um, indicate that this line is being wrapped. And of course, when that becomes wide enough, it is put into a single line again. So again, uh, you do not have to worry about the layout of your lines in terms of um, end of line characters or wrapping lines. That is all done automatically for you. Another thing that um, Stride does for you automatically is the spacing of expressions. So for example, if I put an if statement in here and there, the condition now is an expression. So if I write something like x is less than 3 plus 7 times 6, then you will see here, um, if you look very, very carefully, that the uh, operands of the multiplication operator are spaced a little bit, bit more tightly than the operands of the plus operator because the multiplication binds more, uh, more tightly, so spacing is used to indicate the binding. If I select this end and put in a parenthesis that put parentheses around this um, this term here, then the spacing changes because this now binds more tightly. So there is automatic spacing in expressions um, to help you read the expressions and give you a hint about the priorities of evaluation. Um, if we want to disable a statement temporarily that is traditionally doing by commenting it out. In Stride you don't use comment symbols for that because semantically of course inserting a comment um, and disabling a statement are two entirely different operations. So we have a different look for them. You can see here what comments look like. They are here in the code in this greenish color. But if I want to disable a statement, say that if statement, I can right click on it and say disable. And what it looks like is this. So this statement becomes blurred. It is sort of blurred out of the, um, the, the sequence of the code and that is the indication that it is currently disabled. So the look of a disabled statement and a comment are quite distinct because they are logically different things. A disabled statement of course can be re-enabled later um, so it is tempor temporarily um, removed from the execution. Some other um, bits of help that Stride provides is, for example, when you have a method that is overridden from a parent class, for example here the act method, there is an annotation here that it overrides a method from one of the parent classes. This annotation is created automatically and is inserted for you. You do not have to put this in. So for example here, 
the annotation is not there because this method here is not um, does not override a method from a parent. But if it does, um, the Stride ed editor will tell you here. If you want to override a method, by the way, that you haven't overridden, you can go here to the header of the class where the parent class is specified. You can fold this out where it shows you all the message from the superclasses and it also shows you here in this list which of these methods has been overridden in this class. And if you, if I wanted to override, say, the getH method, oops, sorry, I can right-click on this and say override, and that will insert here the frame for the getH method in my current class with the annotation that it has been overridden. Um, that is not the only way how it can be recognized. If I change the name, for example, now the override method um, annotation re is removed because this is not overriding another method anymore, but as soon as I type a method, method name that overrides another method, the annotation is correctly inserted. Another thing that is really useful in Stride is the pinned method header. Sometimes when you have long methods um, and you look at the method and the header of the method, that is often very important, very interesting to know which method you are in, scrolls out of view. In the Stride editor, that method header, if you look here at the top of my screen, that method header gets pinned to the top of the window and the body of the method disappears underneath it so that I can always see what method I'm currently looking at. So if you observe here the top of the screen and I slowly scroll out, you can see always which method you are actually currently looking at. And so if the method is longer, that really helps that you know which method body you're currently seeing. Another helpful annotation is you see here at the side, if there is a control structure such as a loop or an if statement that is very long and the header of that statement is not currently in view, then at the side here of the if statement it shows you what this condition of the statement is. So if I scroll up here, you see there is this if statement with this condition and the sidebar currently is empty, but if the header of this if statement scrolls out of view, then I get the annotation here at the side. So these are um, just some of the nice visual goodies that the Stride Editor um, provides for you to make the reading of your code a bit more easy. Thank you for listening. That is all for today. Until next time. Bye-bye.